Welcome to my channel. This video is for a mini mum tutorial and this is pretty much from start to finish. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and don't forget to tap that bell for notifications on the uploads and live streams. Okay, so I'm working with a 5 inch backer and I'm using 2.5 inch width acetate or luster or polypropylene ribbons. I believe all of these are acetates, but any of those will work. And since it's a minimum, I do 12 inch streamers, rimmed streamers, and a braid or a chain. And I like to cut it a couple inches longer to make sure I have plenty to attach to the backer. I'm starting with the center one. And if you've watched my, my mum tutorials, you know that I usually use the 1.3 inch, also known as um, 1 and 5 sixteenths, I believe, and number 9. But sometimes I like to change it up with different sizes. So this time I had all the colors in the two and a half inch width. So I wanted to try the two and a half inch width for all the ribbons. So you'll see me kind of play around with the color choices or the different colored ribbons and uh, how I lay them down. Right now I'm starting with the black. And then I always go to the center one first. Well, not always, but most of the time I go to the center one and then I go on either side of that center one. It just depends on the design I'm going for. Sometimes I change it up just a little bit. So I'm going to the right and the left. And I try to be really careful about overlapping these. That way when you hold it up and it's worn, the ribbons are still overlapped. Um, that way it looks nice and full even though I'm doing one layer of ribbons. So you don't have to do a lot of layers of ribbons. This is a way to cut costs to make a less expensive mum. Uh, it also makes it less heavy. This mum is very, very popular with not only local people, but on Etsy. So here I'm experimenting with the black and green to see how I want to do it. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is not only because of the braid, but because I'm also going to do uh, name stickers on those ribbons. So I wanted to have two ribbons that are front and center that will really stand out with the two major things that they wanted on the mum. And as you see that that braid is more green than anything so it kind of washed out with the green right under it. So doing the black right under it will make it pop more. So that's why I'm going to attach the green next and you can see I am leaving a gap between the green and the white. That way when I attach the black, it'll be in the perfect position and I'll still have enough room on the green ribbon on the right side of the black to put some skinny stickers, some names, if I wish. Um, if you don't have anything, that's fine too. You could also put like, you know, sports balls and stuff like that. This mum is for a cheerleader, for a cheer team, a competitive cheer team. So this is going to be worn not for homecoming, but throughout the year during competitions. And you can see that black just pops and I liked that the green is on only on the outside and then the braid has mostly green so then it's going to be that green is really really going to pop that braid is in the center. So think about that when you layer your ribbons um, and how you're going to attach your braids, what ribbons are underneath it, see how it really pops. I just uh, I try to think about that kind of stuff because it's really um, to me, it's not, I'm not just making a mom. I'm, you know, designing something. This is art for me. This is, I like being creative. So I really like to take my time and think about how things are going to look. Get that stapled on. And that is a spirit chain. That is a three ribbon spirit chain. But I also, um, wove some extra ribbons in there, some glitter ribbons. So it's got, I want to say it's got like four different ribbons in it, if I remember correctly. That's uh, one of the few things you won't see in this tutorial. Now this was also a blinged mum. So I decided to add some silver glitter ribbon. This is a one and a half inch silver glitter. This, I'm going to make this cute bow. I've made several of these bows this year with this ribbon. It's a stiff ribbon because it's glitter, but it's not too stiff to make a bow. So this is just a simple cheer bow. It's very easy to make. And I'm just so showing you the measurements there. Um, I just eyeball it, but I'm showing, you know, I measured it for the video so you guys could see about what I'm working with there. 
but I usually when I make these bows and stuff I just eyeball it on how big I want to make it and I believe I got this ribbon from Amazon it will be in my Amazon shop under ribbons if you want to go through there and buy that I get commission a little bit of commission off of it um, but it doesn't cost you any extra if you go that route so there it is. It's so cute. I love these bows and I made, like I said, I made several of them because I just really, really like it. I think it, it adds that nice touch of bling and it's just the perfect size. It gives it, you know, a bigger bow, but not like a gigantic bow. You just see how that really sets off the braid there at the bottom. You could glue this on if you wanted to, but I prefer to staple them because there has been times that I have needed to remove a bow and move it somewhere else or make something different and it makes it a lot simpler. I just staple that chanel stem on either side and then I fold up the end of the chanel stem so it won't slide out. So you can remove it. It's not impossible to remove. You can take the staples out or you could simply slide that chanel stem out. And now we're going to attach some of the trinkets, embellishments, bells, stuff like that. Here's what I've got. I've got, I just happen to have a cheerleader with the green uniform. And that megaphone is one of those glitter megaphones. And you can tell, um, I'll show you in just a second, they're a little bit more difficult to attach to the mum. That one I'm just gluing on that cheerleader. And then here's a little green ribbon, green glitter ribbon. I believe this is a the Hobby Lobby green glitter from their Christmas section. Like around where the Christmas crafts are, they have really pretty. And I don't, I'm trying to think what size that is. It's not 5 eighths, it's smaller than that. Um, I just, I'm top of my head, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but it's in the crafts, and they have it in green, they have it in red, silver, and I believe gold as well. It's very pretty, and it's inexpensive. Usually it's 40 or 50% off, so it, 40% off, I guess, so it's easy. You know, it's not that expensive. Okay, so here's the megaphone, and I'll show you what I was dealing with. The holes, uh, you know, it comes with a little loop at the top where you're supposed to attach it, you know, a ribbon or something, but it it's always closed up because of the glitter so you can't do it so I tried this with something different I tried this is a organza or sheer ribbon I believe this is from Dollar Tree they get these throughout the year too in different colors so what I did is I just tied a knot on the bottom I believe I doubled it yes and then I'm gonna add a little hot glue to I know I tripled the, the knot so it wouldn't come through and then I add a little hot glue as well, pull that through so the megaphone won't fall off because you don't want the megaphone to fall off after all that. Just carefully pull that through and then that hot glue will help make sure that it doesn't come off. And that way it hangs down like that. And I thought that was different and another fun way of attaching that, you can just glue those megaphones, you know, like to the braid or something, but I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to hang it and I was happy with the way that turned out. Now I'm going to make a cute bow. This is a silver metallic soft satin ribbon and I don't remember right offhand where I got this ribbon at. You know, could be Hobby Lobby, could have been Michaels. I'm not sure. Probably one of the two though. And then just take a little Chanel stem. This bow is really simple to make. I made a bunch of these bows this year. Like I said, they're real simple to make, and I think they're really cute. And I'm all about the bows. I love to add bows to my mom's, especially the girls. I don't do, I don't go crazy over the boys because I don't think they appreciate bows. Just fold that Chanel stem over. You can twist it. You can fold it over both sides. Just make sure it's attached, or you can glue it on, whichever you're more comfortable with. You can add a little bit of glue like I'm doing here just to make sure it doesn't fall off. Give it a second to uh, dry before you turn that over because you don't want it to glue itself to the, the mum. Uh, I'm sorry I put a bell on that Chanel stem before I tied it on that bow so that's a good way to attach a little bell on your mum as well to put it in between your bow. So I like to do that too and I like to buy those little buttons. You can get them at Hobby Lobby in the scrapbooking and in the sewing department they have little buttons that are 
footballs, uh, basketballs, volleyballs, softballs, and they even have megaphones and the senior caps. And I use a lot of those for the center of my bows to just add something a little different. Okay, so here's another little uh, bow, and I, this time I'm using a green jingle bell. So this is a great way to add bells to mums. This is one of my favorite choices for adding, especially small bells, is just to put it in the center of a bow. I like to have something in the center of my bows. I don't leave very many of them uh, plain on the center unless it's really, really pretty. Like that silver glitter one in the center of the, the braid is really pretty and doesn't need anything else, but you could add something else if you wanted to. And this bow is going to go on with the disco ball or mirror ball, whatever you want to call that. Just a little tiny bow made out of the same exact ribbon with a little bell on it. Just adds a little something else. I'm just trimming off those ends to make them look pretty. And with it being that small, I'm just going to glue that on the end there. You can uh, use your Chanel stem, but it's not going to work as well. It, it really is going to be better to just do a dab of hot glue there. You see that little bow just set that off. It just needed a little something. Since I don't have a lot of braids and chains on these, I want to make sure that everything is really uh, pretty and has little details on it like this. Because you're really going to see these trinkets and stuff on these kind of mums where you're not, you know, it's not hidden by a bunch of braids and chains. So I want to make sure that that stuff really stands out and it's got cute little embellishments and such. So now for some bling, this is the flower shaped diamond mesh ribbon or some people call it the, di you know, diamond wrap or whatever you want to call it. This I also got from Amazon. I get the big rolls of it. I get the two packs. Um, you can buy them single too. I forgot how long the rolls are, but they're really big and it's going to last you a long time. But it's a lot cheaper in the long run because it lasts you forever instead of buying just these small rolls of it. For me, it's better. I get it in gold and silver. So it's a great way to add bling to your mom's. So I'm really blinging up this braid, making it look really pretty. Just try to add some nice little touches, embellishments to it. And I did remember um, on those acetate ribbons, the white was a luster ribbon, but the black and the green are acetate. So you can see you really can't tell a difference. Luster is a little bit uh, less expensive, so it's a cheaper route to go. Um, the texture is a little bit different too. To me, it feels a little bit more like a thick paper or something. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's not like, it's still waterproof. It's not going to ruin if it gets wet. So I don't, I don't want to confuse you by saying paper quality. And I'm not talking about like no, notebook paper. It's thick and it creases just like acetate. It's a really good option. I actually uh, ordered a bunch of ribbon recently, some uh, a bunch of homecoming mum supplies, and I did get several rolls of luster where available, especially in these big rolls and especially in white and black, because usually white and black is not going to be a different color choice. You know, the colors aren't going to be off. And also, if you order the same brand of ribbons, you're going to more likely, likely have the same colors. Um, but if you do buy different brands of ribbons, you are going to come across where your colors don't match exactly. And I do have different brands and I have all different colors of like royal blue and purple and green and orange. They're the worst. Orange and uh, purple and blue are really the worst. The colors never match up completely. So you have to be careful of that because you don't want to have a bunch of different colors going on. Now when you're using like different types of ribbons like acetates and glitter ribbons and soft satins and uh, organzas and blah blah blah, those 
you know, are never going to match up perfectly. And that's okay because they're different types of ribbons. So that's fine. If they vary a little bit, that happens all the time. But like I said, with your acetates, like when you're making braids and chains and stuff, it will stand out more if you're using different brands and the colors don't match up. So I have to be very cautious about that. Okay, so I added the flower bling to the bottom of those uh, ribbons just to add a little extra bling. You can see that really sets it off. Uh, you can add a strand of the bling as well. And see how that braid is just really blingy. It's got that blingy bow. It's got the glitter ribbon woven throughout. And then it has the flower uh, diamond wrap ribbon on it as well. Here's some more of that. And I am going to cut a strand. Uh, glue it to there that has, you know, just like one strand hanging down. I'll show you. You just have to cut it to the length you want. Cut it across how many widths you want to. just decide where you want to glue that at. I don't glue it up on the backer. I glue it right below the backer because when I go to attach all those backers together, I don't want to have to deal with that big heavy chunk that I can't staple or glue, you know, glue together. It's going to leave a big gap. So I always glue that kind of stuff right under the backer. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the um, backer, the top backer where the flower goes. And I'm using, again, I'm using the two and a half inch uh, acetate or luster, and I'm using the one and a half inch width uh, glitter. And these are cut at five inches long. If you're making a regular size mum, you'll want to go six inches. But for my uh, minis and for my mid size, I cut my loops or make my loops at five inches long. So when they're folded, they're going to be two and a half inches uh, long. And when you do six inches, then when you make the loop, the loop is three inches. So it's not much of a difference, but it does make a difference. You don't want that back or to be too big. Um, if you watched my video t two weeks ago for the midsize that I showed the ribbon streamers and the braids and chains and attaching the leg garter, um, I think that was all I showed on that video. And I, and I told you all that I had a mini mum that matched it. This was this is the mini mom that went with it. Now, I made the backers identical. The mom did the midsize for her. She wanted one to wear, a leg garter to wear during the competitions. And then this is for the daughter to wear before the competition. Um, so I made their, she wanted them similar, but not exactly. Of course, you know, with one being a mini and one being a midsize, they're going to look different. But I made the backers identical. I just changed up the colors. So as you can see on the green, the green acetate is the 1.3 inch or number 9. And then that's a 5 8 inch black glitter. And then on the um, mid-size one, hers I believe I did on the wide loops, I believe I did green with silver glitter. And then for the smaller loops I did black and then maybe silver I can't remember for sure I'll show it though I'll show them at the end of this video side by side but I did make the backers identical so what I did there is I took a small loop of ribbon um, or spool of ribbon I'm sorry and I made a circle on there so I have a guide on where to attach the loops like how far in on the backer because that does make a difference you can have one loop sticking much further off than the other one and if you want them to be symmetrical this is a good tip just try to find the center of your backer and then draw a circle with something smaller like another spool of ribbon and with six loops when I'm working with six loops I go north and south for the first two loops and try to get them even across so you have a, the same amount of space on your east side and your west side now I'm going to attach two and I'm just eyeballing it on where I need to attach them at. Make sure that they're 
even around and even on you know going up and down like how far in on the backer so I want to try and have even spaces between each loop it's never perfect um, you, and when you're stapling them on you can you can easily remove them just have a little uh, something like needle nose pliers or um, a staple remover nearby so you can pull those off if you need to and I do that all the time I I look at it and realize it's you know off too much and I you can some people will just yank them off but I always end up ripping the ribbon when I do that so I always take the time to remove the staples and then reattach them unless you want to go through making the loops again which I do not and there's the last one so this is how you would do six loops on a backer and again this is about a five inch backer now I'm just going to go between each one of those and attach the smaller loop and this makes a really pretty backer. It's very simple to make too. Just get in there with your stapler. You can see I have two different staplers this year. They're boss stitch staplers. <coughs> that silver one is a P3. That is also on my Amazon shop. I got mine from Amazon. I've had it for over five years and not had any problems with it. The other one my husband found on clearance I believe at Walmart and it's it's the same brand but it's a different type they're both plier staplers and it takes different staples though which is the most infuriating because now I have to buy two different staples but I like having two staplers um, that way I can load them both and then when one runs out I can use the other one and then I, I can have to refill them both at the same time but when you're making mums you go through staples like crazy so there's the mid-size one you see how I alternated the colors. Yeah, I did the green wide and then I did black 1.3 inch with green glitter on top. And that green glitter that's on top of the 1.3 inch, that also was from Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. Okay, so now I'm going to attach these two sections together. I did not show attaching the leg garter on this one. I did show it on the um, midsize, but I also went ahead and saved it in... I'm going to show you on here as well. So here is the flower. This is the five and a half inch flower. You just want to pull all that off. Now I'm going to cut that stem down so it's flat. And then I'm going to take a Chanel stem and run it through there. <coughs> and on the smaller flowers, you really don't need a full one. It's easier to work with if you have a full Chanel stem, but a lot of times I just use these partial ones, especially on the smaller flowers. You just want to tie a knot, pull that through, and then I always add hot glue to make sure that that stays where I want it. So I just hot glue under that knot, pull it back down all the way, shake it out, kind of give it a squeeze, because you don't want to see that knot after it dries. So if you squeeze that, those petals together, it's going to cover up that knot. Now if you're attaching something like I'm going to be doing with a custom cutout or something that's going to cover up that center, you don't have to worry about it as much. But if you're not, you want to make sure that that knot is being covered up. So I, you saw me make a hole in the center of my backers there with just a little screwdriver. And see that's the perfect size for my flower. Just gonna, I like to staple that Chanel stem to the backer. Just trim that off. I just want to make sure my flower is secured on there, so I do a couple of different measures. I do the, the Chanel stem in the center, gluing in the knot on there, and then I also staple it and hot glue it to the backer. And then, of course, my backers get glued and stapled together, too. So I just want to make sure that everything is nice and secure, and then also gluing the flower to the backer. And that's more for, um, you wouldn't want like the wind to catch it or for someone to move that and be able to see all that mess underneath there so that's the main reason why I glue that flower down because I don't want anybody to be able to see that mess under that flower just press that down make sure it dries good and then it's time to start attaching those two packers together just 
do a good amount of glue. You don't want it to ooze out though, so be careful. I start in the center and kind of work my way out. And just press that down so it glues together. I don't like any gaps in my backer, so I try to get them closed together. That's also the reason for stapling all the way around because it's going to make sure those backers are nice and together, really secure. Go all the way around. I like to make sure I really go over that garter as well to make sure doubling the security on that garter, you wouldn't want that garter to pull out. So I do glue my garter and staple it and then I staple all the way around once I'm attaching all the sections so that garter really gets secured in there. You can just do your very best to secure all that stuff. It's still not foolproof, especially if people are rough with the mums. I mean, you just can't control what people are going to do to them. And try to get all the way around there as close in the center as you can. The bigger the mum, the harder it is to get in that center section. Just do the best you can. You can also put some glue in there and hold it down. Now here is the mid-sized mum. This is how I attached the the garter for the leg garter. I like to cut the garter in half, glue it on there, and then staple it on there. And this is the ribbon streamers. So before I attach the braids or anything, I just went ahead and attached the garter to that backer. If you cut it in half like that and then attach it on the ends, it's going to make the garter bigger. It's going to give them more room, especially if it's for a leg. For a thigh, you want to, you want to, you wouldn't want it to cut off their circulation or anything. But if they're really tiny, then you may not want it as big as that. And same if it's for a guy that's got a really big arm. You know, some of these guys have really big muscles. They just might be a big guy. You might want to do it like this to give them more. But that's about as big as you can make that garter. Now that black and white garter that I did on the midsize, it actually, she said it stretched out. And I, it was one of my older ones, um, but it was still from Homecoming Mum Supply Store. And I had never had that problem. I'd never had anybody say that the garter stretched out. I don't know if nobody, no one else just told me or what, but that was the last one I used of that one. And I don't even remember which company I got that from. I don't remember if it was from Amazon or if it was from one of the other mum supply stores. I honestly don't remember. Um, but this black one was from All American and she didn't say anything about that one stretching out. It was just hers. And so I had to give her some pointers for trying to make it smaller. So what I'd said was like you could gather it in a section and sew it together or even hot glue it together. But sewing it together is going to be more secure than anything. You could even pin it, but I would be afraid the pin would snap open and then like stab you. So to me that was like the only options I could come up with. And you see I clipped that all around. This is my clean my clean backer. Uh, usually I use a white backer but I've been running out of white chipboard so I have a solution for that. I just I'm using uh, just a, a brown one and I also clip it all the way around instead of staying in there holding it tightly together. Um, I just use those clips from Dollar Tree and they really hold it together really well. And then I just have to take them off when I'm done. You can see that's nice and closed up. There's no gaps in those backers. You don't want that. A little gap is fine, but you don't want these big gaps. If you can see into it, that's too much. So now I'm going to do the custom cutout. And this is a megaphone. And I also put her initial on it. So this is a three layer megaphone because it's outlined in black. So that's two layers, the green and the black, and then her initial in silver. So it's three layers. And on the midsize, I did the exact same custom cutout. I just changed the colors up where I believe it's black, um, maybe with silver behind it and then green initial. I can't remember. I showed it and I'll probably show it again. Or you can go over to that link to the mid-size one and look at it because I showed it finished as well. But I didn't want them to be identical, so I just wanted to change them up a little bit. And my custom cutouts, a lot of the designs I find from Canva. And then I just play around with them from there. I have to go to, I have a, a 
brother scan and cut too. That's what I what I cut my custom cutouts on. So I have to use their program, and that's where I outline everything and then add the A and stuff, and then I send it over to my machine. So whatever uh, vinyl cutter you have is what you know program you're going to use, but to find like some of these uh, designs, simple designs like that, I get them off Canva. So that's where I start with the, pro the process. And I did have a little video where I showed some of that stuff. There's that bow again, uh, that simple bow I said, but this time I'm using a one and a half inch glitter ribbon. This is also from Hobby Lobby. This is from the Christmas section. It's those big rolls that they always have kind of on the bottom of the Christmas ribbons where the gift wrapping and uh, where the wreath stuff is. I can't remember how long those rolls are. They're not 50 yards, but they're pretty big yards, uh, pretty big rolls of, of ribbon. And I got that same design. You know, it's got glitter on it. It's a sheer ribbon. I got it in um, blue, green, I think gold as well. But that all, those will all be great for homecoming mums. Now I'm just taking a scrap piece of that acetate. I cut a little triangle. And I'm just going to cover up those staples on the back of that braid. So if you worry about those staples showing, just cut you a little piece of acetate ribbon. And usually you'll have a little scrap piece from all the ribbons you cut that you can just grab a little piece of that. Just want to make sure that it covers up the staples but it's not sticking out from behind where you can see it and just add a little hot glue and that'll cover up your staples. I don't always do this. I used to do this all the time and then I just kind of like felt like people didn't really care and I stopped doing it. Now I just kind of do it if, if it looks like there's a lot of staples behind something and maybe it, you know, the braid kind of turns. Sometimes the braids will turn more so you have to watch that. Okay, so I'm cutting this silver um, vinyl to go on the very back of the uh, the mum because of the brown uh, chipboard that's showing. I don't like that. I think it's ugly. So what I've been doing is is uh, covering it with some vinyl. I have some really big rolls of vinyl, and so I have the silver and I have uh, gold and I have a few other colors that I have a lot of, and that's why I'm using this. And this is a new cutter I bought off Amazon. I showed it on a live stream when I got them in. I got this one and another one, and I'm hoping to make, to be able to cut backers really quickly with them. And then also to to cut like this. This is something I started doing this year with the vinyl. It was a good way to make a clean backer on the back side. Plus the vinyl is going to make it more waterproof if they happen to get wet. But this was my first time using that for the vinyl. That's why I was kind of messing around with it. And you can tell I haven't used it very much. So here's a picture of the finished mum with all the stickers on it. And I have shown attaching stickers on mums in the past. Um, there's lots of videos where I showed that. So I don't like to show the same thing over and over again. And that's a real tedious process. It would make the video much, much longer. But if you do want to see that... I'll show some other videos where you can see that. Um, and I use different fonts. Again, I find a lot of these fonts on Canva. And then I just have to send them over to the the, the Brother Scan and Cut. Uh, I think it's Canvas Workshop or something like that. I can never remember what it's called. But that's where I have to send everything and then send everything to my machine. So it's a long process even for doing the stickers. turned out really really cute I was very proud of it this was after homecoming was over my creativity level was going <laughs> down because of all you know after homecoming kind of get ugh. but uh, I was able to get you know get a little break in there and, and get creative I believe I had these, uh, she needed these like at the beginning of December. So I got a little bit of break after homecoming before I had to do these. You can kind of see that vinyl there on the back side. 
but I thought it turned out really, really cute. And you can see that black ribbon, how I did the, the where I did her name, and then the black ops really, really big, and then I could still do vinyl on the right side of that as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, don't forget to click those links on the top. They're called cards. They'll slide across during the video. So those will be uh, videos that I think pertain to this mom some way. Like I, there's going to be one for that mid-size. So just click on that. And then there'll be some, like uh, I'll try to do one for the deluxe spirit chain, the three ribbon spirit chain, and then any other videos I think that kind of go with this mom as well. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share and like and comment. Please be kind with your comments. Please be kind to others. And happy mom making, everyone.